Hello everyone and welcome to Real Life Talks. I'm your host Yvonne Heath, author of the book Love Your Life to Death and founder of the I Just Showed Up movement. So joining me today is the lovely Kiera Thompson. Hello, Miss Kiera. Hello, Yvonne. How are you? I am so great. Kiera and I happen to be, well, we live in the same town, yes. Huntsville. Well, I actually moved down south to Port Sydney. Oh. Yes. But <laughs> I'm going to hear, we're going to chat about Kiera's story, but we're going to start with a wonderful little clip. And now announcing your Miss Canada 2017, Kiera Thompson. Thompson and I'm Miss Canada 2017. Oh my gosh, I was so excited. I actually didn't feel nervous and then I kind of messed up my speech a little bit and I wasn't sure that that was going to be, uh, I thought that was going to be my final leg in the competition, but it ended up being the most amazing. It, this whole experience has just been so amazing. I'm just so honored and so excited to be here. So when I saw that clip, I just was so filled with emotion and it was actually mind boggling because it was like, is that Kira Thompson, the <laughs> cute little girl I saw running around her mom's house who was Heather, wonderful dog groomer who groomed our dogs for many years and you were just this cute little girl, <laughs> Miss Canada 2017. Yes, it was crazy. Crazy. It was crazy. Yes, yeah, so tell me how did that, how did that happen? This is, uh, was that something that you always dreamed of? Um, I used to watch Miss Universe when I was like very little and I thought one day I'm going to do that. And you really thought that? Yeah, okay. but I, I grew up and I got busy and I was like, well, and my mom, I think, and I had a conversation about it and um, I said, well, I want to do that. And I was 21 or 22 at the time. And she's like, I think you're too old, but mm -hmm. I don't know. And then, um, so I kind of got that out of my head completely. And then when I was 24, so three years later, yeah. um, I looked and found an ad and found out that you don't have to be under 22. You could be up to 28. So. Wow. Yeah, so I applied for Miss World Canada, Miss Canada, and Miss Universe Canada, and got accepted into all three. Wow, yeah. so what I love the most about this story, Kiara, is knowing, and we'll go back to, I mean, you did not grow up, grow up a very confident, bold, with great self-esteem, no. no. did you? No, I no. didn't. No. So tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, um, I. So I, when I went to university, um, I had experienced bullying kind of all through my childhood and into high school. Um, it got worse in high school. So I went into university and um, it kind of even continued into there. In so, university? Yeah, in bullying. university. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And um, it, was, it was better, but I just had like low self-esteem and it just wasn't really, it was, I was depressed and anxious mm -hmm. constantly and it was hard for me to even leave my house, so. So you were anxious and depressed and mm -hmm. it was hard for you to leave your house. And yeah. like, tell me, I, even when I hear bullying, it just kind of makes my heart sink. And what did, what did people bully you about? What was, um, what did they, were people just it, mean physically? What did they do? It was, uh, it was girls. They are girls. Stop <laughs> being mean yeah, girls, exactly. yes. I think like we should empower each other and build each other up, but unfortunately that wasn't the case. And uh, so, did they bully you because you were cute? Or what did they bully you about? It might have been. I don't. I don't know exactly, but um, my family dynamic wasn't typical. I didn't have a dad, and my my grandma kind of stepped in to play the to to play a parental role. Yes. And um, I think that was kind of weird for people back in the day. It was more families were even even if the families weren't together, like their mom and their dad, they still had a dad and. Um, I didn't, so. So people teased you yeah, about not was, having a dad. Mm -hmm, and having my grandma be kind of one of my parents, so. 
You know, I just, I have to just stop and wonder what is going on in someone's mind when you don't have a dad, so most likely there's already some, some hardships mm -hmm. with all of that. Yeah. I'm and going to give people a hard time about that. I don't know. It never made very sense sad. to me. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I always felt kind of like the odd one out, and especially sure. if I was going over to friends' houses or birthday parties where both family members were there, both parents, mm. um, and then I felt like I was different because I didn't have that, and people, kids made it seem like I was different, so. Oh my goodness, yeah. and how ironic, I mean, today, mm -hmm. every other person is divorced, there's single parents everywhere, yeah. and they don't even think that uh, children even see that as, yeah. that's sort of, sadly, again, normal. Yeah, right. It's sad, yeah. Um, mm. And then later on, after, like that was more public school, and then eventually it turned into, oh, well, you like this boy, well, I do too, so I'm gonna sabotage you, or <laughs> like, just yeah, it was, girl, yeah, caddy girl. Yeah, but it was it was James. pretty to the core. Yeah, wow. there was one girl who went to a different school, who um, she she was gonna show up to the school, and she, there were threats. There were it was really that's awful. It was scary. Yeah, yeah that's really mm -hmm. sad because yeah. it's already enough to go through puberty and high school yeah. and all of that. So to to compound yeah. the that's. That makes me it was really sad. sad. Yeah, but but you kind of showed them. Yeah, <laughs> I figured like after a while and after dealing with it for so long, I realized that I didn't want to be uh, weak or feel weak, and I knew I wasn't weak on the inside. So mm -hmm. I thought I would do something to change it. I mean, that is pretty bold, though, to go from feeling anxious, not really wanting to leave your house, <laughs> yeah. to I'm going to apply to a beauty pageant. So why of all the things like sports or whatever, why a beauty pageant? Just um, so curious. Well, I've never been great at sports. Right. <laughs> so, Me neither. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I thought maybe I would, um, I would try something that I'd always saw on TV and thought was um, too far out of reach. Yeah, so, that's a lofty goal. Yeah, it's, yes. it's something that most people don't think they'd ever do. So right. I was like, you know what, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to apply and I'm going to try it. And if I don't like it, I don't like it. But right. then I, I've done it. And then, yeah, it, it just kind of took off from there. So, but the first, you did you go into a beauty pageant for Northern Ontario or something? Yes, and yes. you didn't even place. I Tell didn't us about place. that. I did yes. So I did Miss North. <laughs> Miss North Ontario, and uh, I thought I was going to, well, I didn't know what it was going to be. I, right. I had no idea what it, I was going to expect, um, but it was just going to be a fun weekend for me to meet people, and mm -hmm. and that's exactly what it was. Yep. I didn't place, which was totally okay. Mm -hmm. um, I would just thought maybe it wasn't for me, and then, um, dur but during that uh, pageant, I got accepted into Miss Universe Canada, and then, oh. yeah, and then, um, Miss Canada scouted me on Facebook after after that, so I was like, you know what, I'll give it a try. I'll see, I'll see what it is, and I'll I'll just try. <laughs> so they scouted you and invited you to participate. Yeah. Is that how that goes? Yeah. Okay. So they, um, I guess they were they were hosting auditions, but I didn't even have to go through the audition process. So you were cool. just wow. Yeah. So yeah, it was very very awesome. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of good to know if somebody wants to do something like that, even if you don't place, but somebody they're still there yeah. scouting you. For they're watching. A, yeah. Yes. That's the cool thing about pageant too is is I've seen girls have modeling careers take off because people right. are in the audience watching they're paying attention to what you're doing how you're carrying yourself right what you're doing for your community so mm -hmm. it's, it's really a big like connection can, yeah, yeah it's networking some doors yeah. and uh, you meet and and if if nothing else a great experience exactly. I mean yeah and really that's all you go into it thinking is mm -hmm. I'm gonna have fun I'm gonna just see where it goes and I'm going to make friends and meet people who are like-minded right. and strong empowered women so you just yeah and when I think of a beauty pageant and you know people think oh a beauty pageant that's you know whatever superficial but again it can be a vehicle mm -hmm. to open other doors or to you know now you have this title well now you can do the work you want to do because I know you're very passionate about a lot of things and yes. we'll get into that but so tell me just tell me a little bit more and I'm laughing because I kind of forgot I was you know wearing this <laughs> you're just, I mean I kind of I kind of like it yes I do it looks I think good I, on you thanks yeah. I, I might I might keep it I um, think you should <laughs> yes <laughs> but tell me about the Miss Canada experience I mean what was that like were you just a ball of nerves your mom 
must have been beside herself. And Yeah, um, it was really weird. While I was there the whole week, I was in the best state of mind I possibly could be in. Wow. Because I had no expectations. Right. So I had already not placed at the previous pageant I was mm -hmm. in. And I was like, you know, I'm just here to have fun. And uh, I'm stepping foot on a national stage. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. And it's way far outside my comfort zone. So <laughs> that's all that really matters at this point. And we'll just see what happens. And I, I didn't have any nerves because I wasn't, I wasn't there to compete. I was there right. to enjoy myself. And I think that really helped me in the long run. What a great attitude. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's the best. So, so you had a great experience. And then <laughs> I, I, just, I just try to envision you're standing there, and they're about to announce who oh, won. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you heard your name. Yeah, it was crazy. I was not expecting it to be me <laughs> whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So it was an absolutely shocking moment that I don't even really remember. Right. <laughs> Good thing it's on so camera. Shocked. Exactly. Yeah. Good thing I have a recording yes. so that I can show my kids because I couldn't tell them about it. No. Um, I do remember there was a girl beside me who I had become close with over the, the week. And um, she was amazing and very inspiring. And I, I thought for sure it was going to be her when they called my name. I, it was crazy. I almost had a heart attack. Well, yeah, yeah, I guess so. And I'm just, I'm trying to picture your mom, which she, she must have just been oh. a hot mess. Was I she bawling? instantly <laughs> looked at her. And she I was, was like, you said, I love yeah. you. That was to your mom, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, that was it? to my mom. What yeah. a good daughter. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, well yeah, she, she was sitting in the very, at the table that was right in front of the stage. And actually, when we were given the tickets, it was planned for her to be on the other side. So while we were doing rehearsals, I was like, oh, at least my family's not going to be right there because that's going to put the nerves on me. Right. <laughs> and then they were. So um, I did end up messing up my speech a little bit. And I tripped But obviously that didn't matter. Yeah, obviously it didn't. But they, they made me so nervous because they were right there. Because they were right <laughs> yeah. there. So, so I love <clears throat> that you did win. And yeah. you say you messed up your speech a little. Mm -hmm. You tripped a little, yeah. which is great. And I also mm -hmm. love, I guess they've really grown and expanded because you kind of have some tattoos yes. going yes, on I do. here. What do you have here? Um, so I have a paintbrush. That's yes. because I'm an artist and okay. I love, I've always been an artist. So yes. that's just one of my biggest passions. Mm -hmm. um, I also have I love you right there written in my mom's handwriting. What a nice daughter. And she has mine. It's kind of a funny story. How cute, Heather. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, on Mother's Day one year, I I signed her up without her knowing that we were going to go get tattoos Oh, together. okay. Yes. Excellent. So I always have Surprise. her close to my heart. Art. Very nice. Um, and then I have a bouquet of flowers on the back of my arm. Wow. And that's each represents a family member. Yeah. So, so they're all very meaningful. They're all very to meaningful, you. yes. They're all very meaningful and, and very important to me. Yes. Yeah. Well I guess I, I guess these beauty pageants they kinda have to allow <laughs> women who have tattoos because we all I might have a couple myself, <laughs> I'm just saying, but I mean, it's, again, that's the norm these yeah. days, so I'm impressed that mm -hmm. they didn't, you know, say, okay, you're disqualified, you have tattoos. Yeah, the wonderful thing about Miss Canada, the Miss Canada that I won, um, is their personality-based contest. Oh, so interesting. It's not so much a beauty pageant okay. um, as it is beauty on the inside, which I mm. really love about that. See, I did not know that, mm -hmm. and I'm thrilled. I don't think a lot of people would know that, yeah. right? They hear beauty, beauty pageant, pageant. Mm -hmm. and that's just, they think it's it just about your looks. sticks in their looks. head. Yeah, exactly. As, as so it's about personality. Yes. So yes. it was... Uh, I think that helps take the pressure off as well because it's not well if you have a good personality yeah it <laughs> yeah I guess so yeah <laughs> which is funny because uh, here's the truth and I will let you know um, when I first saw a post and it was funny because it was your mom posted oh my daughter Miss Canada 2017 and I thought come on this can't be yeah what from Huntsville are you serious yeah. and I hadn't even heard that which I thought was very sad yeah but I thought well if I'm gonna get to know Kira, have her on the show, I need to know. I, I mean, I, I wouldn't have had you on the show if I didn't meet you and know that you were as genuine and, and authentic as you seemed. Thank well, you. you know, and it was, it was wonderful. We got together and we talked for I don't know, like yeah. an hour and a half. Yeah. It just flew <laughs> by. But you were just such a, a kind and passionate person. And then what your focus had, it had nothing to do with. I want to be the prettiest, best, whatever. Yeah. Tell me about your, what, tell us about your passion with giving a voice to homelessness and. Yeah. 
Um, so a couple years ago, I moved to Toronto, mm -hmm. and uh, I only lived there for eight months, but it was a very eye-opening experience. Mm -hmm. And um, coming from a small town, you don't really hear about homelessness, even though it's it's there. Yes, it's um, more hidden. It's more yeah. hidden, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so it was a little bit of a culture shock for me when I moved there and realized that um, homeless people are just everywhere. Everywhere. And mm -hmm. um, there's so much movement towards so many great things in this day and age and so many things are being tackled and I think for positive reasons but unfortunately homelessness I find is being kind of looked over and, and it's still very very much the That's same huge. as it was like 50 mm -hmm. years ago mm -hmm. and there's so much that needs to change yes. because they're human beings and um, I don't know I found out that that they there's people who freeze to death in winter mm -hmm. and just awful things that you don't expect to hear and you don't realize unless you're happens all yeah. the time yes. yeah and that's just it's horrible it and is the system horrible. is really not set up for them just to, to be successful mm -hmm. and to thrive so that's something I definitely want to change and work on and bring a voice to well I think that's extraordinary and as we talked I want absolutely you must connect with Leah Denbach who is this 18 year old beautiful photographer yes. who who goes and hears um, people's stories who are experiencing homelessness and um, takes their picture or takes photograph and and has books and yep. she wants to you know help she donates all the proceeds from the books to this cause and so I think that you two should totally get together absolutely absolutely yes, absolutely but the, the the disturbing thing is and when I had you're not allowed to make me cry because she didn't cry <laughs> on the show I had, but um, she said that most of the people that she spoke to the greatest they were just so grateful that mm -hmm. someone actually was treating them like a human yeah. being yeah and listening to their story that yes. meant more than you know just tossing a few coins to them so mm -hmm. when when we are passionate about something and we can use our voice to create change and I love that you want to speak to that speak to mental health issues and sharing yeah the fact that you're sharing you went through these things yeah you went through them and you certainly did a lot yeah thank you <laughs> to overcome and and it is outside of your comfort zone Absolutely. isn't it yes it is it's it's very much outside my comfort zone but even still it's it was if I do another pageant I still get just as nervous <laughs> right it's it definitely helps and it helps um, with skill building and yes. and lots of things that everyday life requires so well I think that you know when we're when we're thinking of being outside of our comfort zone, I think one of the things we have to keep in mind is, what's the worst that could happen? Yeah, exactly. Right? It's not like, it isn't life or death. Exactly, yes. That's it, what my biggest the, revelation. It I is, yeah. it's huge. Like, what, if you do this, what is the worst that can yeah, happen? Yeah, exactly, in what, any situation. In any situation, yeah. right? And that's like the whole public speaking thing, that being one of the things that scares people the most. Yep. Some people are more afraid of it than death. I mean, yeah. my goodness. Like, I know. And the, what's going to happen? Nothing. Like, you're going to go on stage. You're going to say what you need to say. You might mess up. You might not. And it, yeah. And then you get off stage and you live your life. <laughs> exactly. And yeah. that's I, I, that's just such a huge piece, right? And I think there's two things. We're too hard on ourselves. It's true. Yeah. We're so hard on ourselves. Like, forget the perfection. Yeah. Like, that just is such a high bar. And not attainable and not realistic yeah so here you were miss you're at miss canada 2017 yes you had a little trip mm -hmm. messed up on your speech a little yep you have some tattoos yep yes and, I, and I killed it <laughs> <laughs> you killed it you totally did and that is so something to be proud yeah, of you. isn't it thank you and i know you're also passionate about reaching kids yes. and saying so what 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 is the message that you most want to bring to children I just want young people yeah it this is children it's anybody it's that um, no matter what you're facing no matter what adversities are happening at the moment it's temporary and you can overcome anything and and things that'll help you are are setting goals for yourself um, and just even if they're minor if they're do five things make my bed today then yeah. As long as you can do that, you can do anything. One yeah. little step at a time. Yeah. I still have to, I have to go back to say from anxious, afraid to leave the, home, uh, the house to entering a beauty pageant. Like what steps <laughs> did you take in between there? Because truly that's like... 
it a gigantic was, uh, leap. Yeah, you're right. Oh, it, it was, uh, I know, I keep I adjusting mine. My... Oh, <laughs> you sure, have to look yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, yeah. Um, no, but um, mine was basically once I applied the application process, that was my. That was my okay. You got to step I've up. Done this. Yeah, I've done that. That was that took nothing. I did it on my computer on my bed while I was sitting on my bed and and um, in the comforts of my own home. And then from there, I realized okay, there's things that you have to do to prepare for this. So I started practicing my walk. I started practicing um, speaking to people with confidence, and mm -hmm. and I used just normal everyday people as as practice and yes. I was like okay I'm gonna pretend you're a pageant judge and I'm going to um, pretend I'm talking to you the way that I like with confidence mm -hmm. with grace with everything that you're supposed to and then it just kind of happened from there and now it comes a little bit more naturally for me which is which is extraordinary just, yeah it's amazing it really is and I mean I just I play this game all the time I just step out of my comfort zone and mm -hmm. you know when I'm speaking like sometimes I'll speak to a group of people I know probably don't really want to hear my message yeah. and it's like, okay I can do this what's the worst that can happen yeah they're not they really don't want to hear me exactly. and you know uh, and there's always somebody falling asleep in the audience <laughs> every time. I know that he's there, and I know that someone will be talking to their neighbor and someone will be texting, right? Yeah. And and you just, you know these things, so I think that's another piece is anticipate the glitches. Exactly, yeah. You just have to realize that um, you can't plan everything and nothing is going to go the way you want it to, and, and that's what I was doing when I had, well, I still suffer from anxiety, but okay. when I was, like, really, really... Um, in my darkest times, mm -hmm. it was uh, it was like I tried to plan everything and tried to make right. the outcomes happen the way I wanted to, Ooh, and, and you yes. can't, you just can't do that. And and same goes for if you're doing public speaking or mm -hmm. if you are if you're doing your show. There's going to be things that might happen, and you just have to roll with it. Absolutely, yeah. and and that is life. And when we mm -hmm. want everything to be perfect that's yeah. what creates even more anxiety right exactly. yes. yes so when you say you still deal with anxiety and I, I appreciate that you're saying that mm -hmm. so do you have certain skills do you know when like what makes you become more anxious and do you have skills that you've got okay I feel it coming on yeah um, so um, it's, it's more manageable now that I've done things with Miss Canada because I've had to just kind of be like, okay, you're anxious, but you still have to do whatever event you're going to or, or you may be having an off day, but you still have to do it. Mm -hmm. So basically just overcoming and not giving up and not backing down and, and not saying, oh, maybe I'll just go home or, or what I used to do. <laughs> That's yeah. what I used to do. That's what I you just to, used to just yeah, go I'd, home. I'd be like, oh, well, I'm nervous to go to this class today, so maybe I just won't go. Wow. Or, yeah, and, and that wasn't good. I still finished with good grades, but it wasn't good for my own personal benefit. Right. Um, I just, so I, so now I just push through no matter what and go through it with whatever it is, no matter how anxious I am. And, and lo and behold, you're okay on the other side, yeah, right? Like that's even it. if you're anxious, yeah. that's okay. I'm going to get through this and how I feel is only temporary. I think that's an important piece also. Yeah. How anxious I feel right now mm -hmm. is temporary. Exactly. And, yes. And I can still feel anxious and get through. Yes. And right? what I realized is because when you're anxious and it overcomes you and you let it overcome you, um, you feel like there's no way out and that that's the worst possible thing and you just have to realize that there's all you're going to come out on the other side as you're saying and it's going to be fine and yep. you're not going to die because you of will it, get or, it yes you'll you be, will get through you'll it you'll get through it and i've shown myself that and that's really helpful certainly me. have in yes. a very big wonderful way um here's a hard question mm -hmm. what would you say to people who are bullying others right now oh yes <laughs> i would say um well, Besides first, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> stop it, but mm -hmm. at the same time, um, I know that bullies are people who are um, dealing with their own personal demons. Yes. So they just need to do the same steps that somebody who's getting bullied needs to do by creating goals for themselves, um, trying to uh, overcome their demons and just, just change their negativity into a positive outcome. Absolutely. I mean, anyone who bullies others cannot be happy no. with themselves no. inside. You can't go home at the end of the day and say, you know what? I bullied three people. What a great day, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely not. And if they don't have support and if they don't have people in their circle that are good to them, they need to reach out and find somebody mm -hmm. because there's nothing that feels better than being 
good, positive. kind, positive yep. to other people. And yeah. knowing that you made a positive difference. Exactly. Right? Which is what you're doing. Yes. And and so what would your message be again? Tell your message to young people or people anywhere, uh, because there's so many that might have goals or, mm -hmm. you know, that seem beyond their reach. Yeah. Just start small and go and for it. Go for <laughs> it. Just go for it. Just just like I did. I I didn't think I could do it, and I just applied and said, well, well, let's see what happens. I might not get a reply back, but I might. We'll see. And then I did, and, and I just took the steps from there. You just have to take it. I and here you are. Yeah, Hannah. exactly. And I love that you um, entered that first beauty pageant. Yeah. And you didn't place. Yep. Right? You didn't place. You were there, and you had fun, and then they scouted you, mm -hmm. which, what a huge honor yes, and compliment. Yes, exactly, yes. And you still said, I, like, you didn't let it stop you that you didn't place. You didn't let any anxiety, because I'm sure you felt anxiety through oh, yeah. all of that. It didn't just <laughs> go away. Um, it didn't, no, but I realized I just took what I had failed at previously, or not really even failed, but what I obviously everybody's they would love to win the crown. Of course. So I was like, well, you know, I don't expect to win the crown this time. I want to just have fun. Yeah. But I do want to be prepared for in case it were to happen. Yeah, exactly. Be. So I, oh, here comes Jordy telling me it's time to go. <laughs> Kara, I am so proud of you, Miss thank Canada you. 2017. Thank you so thank much you. for being a voice for change and to inspire people. You inspire me. Thank you so much. You thank inspire you. me as well. Thanks so much. <laughs> So thanks for joining us today. Real Life Talks is a show about learning how to just show up for yourself, just show up for others, and sometimes talk about things we don't normally talk about. So if you want to be empowered and resilient, if you want to be able to just show up for others and just show up for yourself, my call to action is always plan your life, plan your death, and then just love your life to death. And always bring your own tambourine to the party. <laughs> thanks. Bye for now. Thank mm -hmm. you.